the very names conjure college basketball greatness. Carolina, Louisville, Williams, Patino. National titles integral to their lore. Today, Madness Partners in the Big Dance. The winner once again earns an invitation to the game's exclusive club, the Final Four. And welcome to downtown Charlotte, North Carolina. The East Region Final features the Cardinals of Louisville and the Tar Heels of North Carolina, the top seed. A number one has already advanced for the third consecutive year. UCLA goes to the Final Four. The winner of this game will meet either Kansas or underdog Davidson. They play tomorrow. And welcome aboard, fans, Dick Emberg and Jay Billis. And 40 minutes from now, one of these teams will be heading to San Antonio. The big men inside, they have such differing roles in this game, don't they? And you start with Tyler Hansbro, the National Player of the Year. And one thing you know, he never takes a playoff, and he never gets outworked. And what makes him special, the offensive class and also the free throw line. Louisville has to keep him off of both. His opposite number, David Padgett, the consummate team player. Louisville runs their offense through him. He is the voice of the defense. He makes everybody better. His last 12 games, 13 points per game, shooting 70% from the field. North Carolina did not lose away from Chapel Hill this year. 21 straight games, and it's a partisan sea of Tar Heel Blue here in Charlotte to root for their beloved Tar Heels against Louisville. Here are some of the outstanding Pontiac game-changing performances so far. B.J. Raymond hits an overtime three as Xavier advances past West Virginia. Stephen Curry of Davidson with this timely three broke a 74-all tie and led the Wildcats over Gonzaga. San Diego's Dijon Jackson delivers the clutch jumper to K.O. UConn. Ty Rogers of Western Kentucky hits the game-winning three to down Drake in overtime. Those are just a few of the plays we've nominated as Pontiac game-changing performances. On Sunday night, go to Pontiac.com slash NCAA to vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the tournament and help determine which school will win the $100,000 scholarship contribution from Pontiac. Plus, enter to win a Pontiac G8 and Trip for 8 to this year's Final Four from Pontiac. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Enterprise Rent-A-Car, Holiday Inn Express, HP, and by Pontiac. Shortly after 9 in the evening in downtown Charlotte, North Carolina, 19,000 plus the capacity of the starting lineups for the Cardinals. Number six on the nation field goal defense. McGee, Smith, Williams, Palacios, and the big man Padgett. North Carolina's the second best scoring team in the country. Lawson, Ellington, Ginyard, Thompson, Hansboro. And tonight's game is brought to you in HDTV by HP. Our three men with the whistles tonight in this East Regional Final, Ed Corbett, Scott Thornley, and Terry Weimer. North Carolina, they have not had to wear their blue uniforms yet. They've been in the state for the first two games in Raleigh, these two in Charlotte. Louisville and the Cardinal Red, and we're underway. Palacios to Williams, and he takes it deep. Tipped by Patchett, not there. Thompson sends Lawson quickly to the other end. And right away, North Carolina tests the transition defense of Louisville. That's going to be a big key in this game. Can they stop North Carolina from getting easy baskets at conversion? Pulling out to Ellington, and he's well off the mark and saves it. Second chance. Lawson for three. And uh, Patchett had trouble handling that. Bounced off his head but to a teammate. Smith to McGee. Palacios, back door to Williams, knocked away by Lawson and touched last by Terrence Williams. Rick Pitino, seventh year at Louisville, took the Kentucky team to the national title 12 years ago. Louisville giving some full court pressure. 
and usually drop back in a 2-3 zone after they press full court. Lawson on the loose. Good pickup on the backside defense by Louisville. Genyard and Hansborough's first shot is short. And again, the rebounding of North Carolina. They've not been out-rebounded in 31 straight games. Hansborough, typical of the All-America, three-time All-America. Hansborough with the first basket of the game. Uh, Louisville making Hansborough shoot over the top without fouling, but they cannot give second-chance opportunities to North Carolina, the best offensive rebounding team in the country. Around the perimeter, the Cardinals of Louisville. Jerry Smith gets a screen. Trouble handling the ball. Down to 10 on the clock. Smith to the goal. And it's tied at two. As Jerry Smith, the sophomore from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, with the basket, a steal by Palacios. Deion Thompson caught and turned. And he needs to catch, face the defense, be strong with it. That is a, a bad turnover for North Carolina. Unforced and unnecessary. Terrence Williams averaging 11 a game. He's a stat sheet stuffer. He leads and assists. We've got more than his share of rebounds as well. And there's Patchett up on top. Down to four, three. It's Williams. Bottom of the well for Terrence Williams. And it's a 5-2 lead. North Carolina looking to pass ahead immediately to try to beat this defense down court and punish Louisville for pressing. As soon as uh, the press is broken, they fall back into that uh, basically a 2-3 zone. That's exactly what it is. A 2-3 zone. They're big inside, but small out of time. Looks like Patrick got a piece of it, but look at the fight by Hansborough. No basket. Well, well before the shot. Tyler Hansborough averages almost four offensive rebounds per game, whether it's man or zone. Louisville has got to get a body on Tyler Hansborough. Foul was on Andre McGee as first. Edgar Sosa in for the first time as you look at Roy Williams. Took uh, the Tar Heels to the national championship three seasons ago. Earl Clark, who has been sensational off the bench, he calls himself E5, wears number five. Lanky 6'8", sophomore. And the Red of Louisville in for the first time along with Sosa. 5-2, Louisville with the early lead. Carolina rarely relinquishes the lead, but certainly not in the tournament. Easy pass, easy basket, as Deion Thompson cuts Louisville's advantage to one. Louisville goes man-to-man -man on the out-of-bounds underneath, and Ty Lawson able to split the double team and show terrific poise when David Padgett came over to shut him off. That's a really nice pass by Ty Lawson and good patience. Padgett again, running the offense off the top of the lane, Smith from three. And Lawson with a hurry. And how will they call out? Blocking on Sosa. Ty Lawson showed very good patience when he got the ball down on the baseline side. Cut off by Padgett. The double team comes, but just gets around it. Nice little bounce pass, and Earl Clark probably should have intercepted that. But you can see, Dick, when... North Carolina gets a defensive rebound on the last possession. It was hands for how quickly they get it out and how fast Lawson is off the dribble. That's Alex Stevenson in for Deion Thompson for North Carolina. As Roy Williams makes his first substitution. 5-4 Louisville. As we approach the four-minute mark into this first half. And clock on him. There's the double team. Tipped out by Padgett. This is Williams. Great pass for Clark. And a foul. Earl Clark, his presence uh, shown immediately. The basket is good. Oh, what a terrific pass. And Marcus Ginyard with an easy two. The junior from Alexandria, Virginia. After the Louisville score, the full court pressure came with an odd man front. And North Carolina went right over the top. That's how you punish a team for pressing you full court. That's really the battle in this, Dick. Easy baskets versus turnovers. Williams, dead center again. And a 9-6 Cardinal lead. Five for Terrence Williams. Look at this one-man press break, Ty Lawson. Now 
to the 2 3 zone after a make. Ginyard feeding underneath the hands ball, and he muscles his way for another basket. He has four. What a pretty hesitation dribble by Ginyard. That opened up the baseline. Hansborough always has his hands ready. And that's going to be a trap on Earl Clark. He misread Jerry Smith's break and skidded to a stop. Almost five minutes played here in Charlotte. The Cardinals by one. Back at the East Regional Final. A reminder, check out the nominees for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the tournament at Pontiac.com slash NCAA, where you can also enter for a chance to win a Pontiac G8 and a trip 4-8 to this year's Final Four. Carolina's ball trailing by one. Nearly five minutes into this final that will send the second team to San Antonio. UCLA Bruins are in, earning the, their spot earlier in a uh, convincing performance against Xavier. Louisville going man-to-man. -man. All eight of Carolina's points have come in the paint. Scramble underneath and bodies flying. No whistle yet. And finally a dual possession arrow to North Carolina. North Carolina is getting a lot of second chance opportunities and Louisville has got to do a better job of keeping the Tar Heels off the offensive glass. Mentioned UCLA. They go to the Final Four for the 17th time. If North Carolina wins tonight, they will equal that best ever in collegiate history as freshman Preston Knowles enters the game for Louisville. His first time for duty. And a good job already by Knowles taking away the backdoor look for Ellington. And Quentin Thomas, number 11, in for North Carolina. Ellington pulling up and hitting. One of the outstanding pure shooters in basketball. And the Tar Heels lead by one. A complete basketball player can now put the ball on the floor as a very good middle game. And silky smooth as a scorer. Palacios, back pass. Here comes Ellington. Quentin Thomas wears number 11. His middle name is Isaiah. Of course, that was Isaiah's favorite jersey number when he played at Indiana. Short again, second chance, but it's stripped away from Stevenson. And here come the Cardinals down by one. But yet another opportunity point blank for North Carolina. That'll be against Quentin Thomas of North Carolina. Lots of officials here tonight. Quentin Thomas tremendously improved and what a great asset to this North Carolina team when Ty Lawson went down in early February it was Thomas that stepped forward and he's one of the big reasons for the improvement of the Carolina team while Lawson was out Thomas the only senior that sees regular duty for North Carolina Palacios does not try to challenge Hansbro and here come the heels Hansborough already down the floor underneath the basket. Oh, what a job by the freshman Knowles. He's up high for the block. Roy yeah. Williams sends in the three new faces. Preston Knowles has a live body, very energetic, a terrific defender, and is going to be an outstanding player. Rick Patino already trusts him to put him into the game and take a, a terrific score in Wayne Ellington. Danny Green in for the first time. He has been sensational as the sixth man, maybe the best in the country. And starters Stevenson, Thompson, Ginyard. Hansbrough gets a breather, and this is Lawson. And the foul, character of Louisville. Well, the Cardinals have moved quickly to this Elite Eight. Impressively averaging a 22 point margin in their three victories. Not quite what North Carolina's done, but a very impressive Rick Patino's team that really came together in February. They struggled till February. Then he said, I got all my players back. We practiced well, went 8 0 in February, and finished in the Big East at 14 and 4. And the key was really getting David Padgett back healthy. And now Padgett entering the NCAA tournament feels 100%. And it's really remarkable that Padgett came back at all. There were many who thought that his career in college was over as a result of that broken kneecap. Missed the first 10 games of the season. Ty Lawson hits both free throws. Carolina with its biggest lead. And North Carolina has been breaking down the Louisville defense off the dribble and getting into the paint with relative ease. 
Williams were on the bench for North Carolina. And the foul inside, pushing was character, trying to get position. That's his second foul, and he walks toward the bench. What a battle of strength between Derek Character and Alex Stevenson. Stevenson trying to get that position. You can see Character just backs him off and dislodges him, and that's where the offensive foul came in. Back to the 2-3 zone. This has been the primary defense for Louisville. It is not big out front. Deion Thompson. Tipped by Green, tipped by Gignard, and again, offensive rebounding power for the number one Tar Heels. North Carolina just dominating the offensive glass. They have 10 rebounds overall to Louisville's two. This partisan crowd on its feet, an 8-0 run for North Carolina, and a whistle reaching in. I believe they caught Gignard. North Carolina is not a good offensive rebounding team. They are a great offensive rebounding team. And Marcus Ginyard, who is such a great defender, averages over two offensive rebounds himself, one of the better offensive rebounding guards in the country, and can run in from the wing. you got to lay a body on him. It was Deion Thompson who was ticketed with a foul, the second team foul, in to Padgett. Can't get it with a left hand. Second chance, Smith from three-point range. That was big and cuts North Carolina's lead to 14-12. One of the best times to shoot a three is after an offensive rebound. The defense has collapsed, and you can kick it out to a shooter who's stepping into a shot. Thompson to Green. Green has been red hot off the bench, and that's so typical. He hits a three. He's been in double figures 22 times this year. All off the bench, and Green ignites the Carolina fans. A five-point Tar Heel lead. Under 12 to go in the opening half. Two weeks from today, the coverage of the Masters on CBS, and you can watch exclusive video of Amen Corner Live, the 15th and 16th holes, and bonus coverage of the entire field with Masters Extra at CBSSports.com, Masters Live, and Masters.org. Danny Green off the bench, nails a tray, and a 17-12 lead for North Carolina. North Carolina coming with a quick trap as the ball comes over half court. Patch it underneath and can't get it to roll in. Back out to Smith. That's Earl Clark and the big man at 6'8 has that kind of range. He was on the line, a two-point shot. Clark picks up the loose ball. Here comes Louisville down by three. There's Louisville's back flow defense, back tipping. Spin move by Williams. Rebound Williams and taken away by Guignard. Look at Hansbrough run the floor. Yes, sir. How many big guys can run the floor with that kind of effort, like he shot out of a cannon? Six points for Hansbrough to lead all scores. Clark inside, knocked away by Thompson, but stays in the hands of the team from Louisville. And Danny Green doing a nice job of moving his feet. Clark takes it inside, stripped by Hansbro. Here's Green. Doesn't have numbers. Gignard sets up the pattern. Green works the baseline. Deion Thompson off the glass. Deion Thompson with four points for North Carolina. Nice job of recognition by Thompson. He had the smaller defender, McGee, on him, and he took advantage of it. Tar Heel fans cheer the biggest lead for North Carolina. Left alone on the side is Williams. Another rebound to North Carolina. One and out, and there's a bump foul. Frustration foul. Terrence Williams. His first. North Carolina, the number one team in the nation, seated number one, and 
barely challenged in the first three games. Uh, average winning margin of 30 points plus as they took care of Mount St. Mary's, Arkansas, and Washington State here on Thursday night by 21. And Roy Williams, his mantra is run, run, run. And Washington State had his Tar Heels almost in a dentist's office with the pace. And now they must feel unchained. They've been running at every opportunity. And right now, North Carolina leading the points in the paint battle 12 to 4. That's key in this ballgame. To take a 21-14 lead and nine and a half minutes to go. They've made their last four field goal attempts, North Carolina. Rivel goes man-to-man -man on out-of-bounds situations. Patchett able to tie up Ty Lawson. Lawson felt he was being held. So did a lot of these fans. Arrow, Louisville. And that was a basket-saving play by David Padgett. Ty Lawson has been able to break this defense down, not only in transition, but in the half court as well. Palacios has returned for Louisville. Green hawking him. A good pressure on the ball by Danny Green. Switches off. Now to McGee and to Patchett. Patchett, nice speed and a foul. Here to be Ginyard, who bumped. McGee out of bounds. Tomorrow in 60 Minutes, a baseball genius who helped win the World Series. What are his secrets? You can find out tomorrow night on 60 Minutes. Whenever David Padgett gets the ball in the high post, he, this team really cuts well off of him, and he can just turn and see over the defense and a terrific cut by Andre McGee. First point for Andre McGee. His dad played college ball at Cal State Long Beach, War 33, and he honors his father by carrying the same jersey number for Louisville. Brother Antoine was a very good player at Colorado as well. He was indeed. Green walks in for an easy two. Nobody's seeing the ball for Louisville, and Danny Green takes advantage of it. Such a smart player. With all the scoring power on this North Carolina squad, it's easy to overlook how well they play defense. They are tough. Reaching in and tying up is Danny Green. That earns possession for the Tar Heels. Green, a junior from Long Island. You saw the feature a week ago. His father incarcerated for a couple of years. Uh, he's out of prison but can't travel out of the state of New York to see his son play. And Danny told us yesterday, just can't wait for his dad to be able to come down and see him in person. Maybe it'll happen in San Antonio. Lawson, so fast. Green wide open. And misses that three, but look at that offensive rebound. Yeah, the best offense for North Carolina has been a missed shot. They have gotten almost every offensive rebound in this game. 12 second chance points for North Carolina. Nice drive and score by Jerry Smith. Yeah, but even after a score, North Carolina runs it right back at you. And scores Wayne Ellington. That was a tough little runner. Floated that one home. Well, he has got every shot in the book. Green now on Clark. Smith draws Ellington. Lawson on Sosa. Hansbrough running inside on Patrick. Sosa to Williams in the corner. Can't hit the three. And that's going to be on Green trying to push Clark out of the box. That's his first foul. Four team fouls, Carolina. It's the heels. Back in Charlotte, 7.24 left in the opening half. Tar Heels by 10. Bottom line, offensive rebounds. Those second chance points have been key thus far, Jay Billis. Well, Louisville's first shot defense has not been bad. It's just they've allowed too many offensive rebounds. In North Carolina, one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country, if not the best. And it's not just Tyler Hansbrough that goes to the offensive glass. Deion Thompson goes as well. Marcus Ginyard, one of the best offensive rebounding guards in the country. You have got to lay a body on Carolina on every possession. That's not a bad court violation, and Smith saves it with uh, Thompson right on his back. I think at first, Smith thought there was somebody behind him that the inbounds man with, was throwing to. Smith to Sosa. Sosa for three is short. 
Clark can't get the rebound. Ginyard. That's a challenged jump shot. Rick Pitino does not want that. In fact, he uh, charts those. He wants less than nine challenge shots in a game. As he wants more than 35 deflections defensively. Keeps those numbers as well. Hansborough from outside. That is a shot Tyler Hansborough would not have taken confidently last year, but he has really worked on it and now becoming more of a weapon when he steps away. The man they call Psycho T has eight points to lead all scores early. Six and a half to go before the intermission. Biggest lead for North Carolina. Sosa, will they count the basket? No signal yet. They're going to call the foul on North Carolina. And it, there is the signal. Basket is good. Tough, too, for Sosa. Just sliding in at the last second, Sosa had left the ground, and good concentration by Edgar Sosa. He had a really tough outing in the ball game against Tennessee, fouled out in just about seven minutes. And when he gets off to a good start, as he did against Pittsburgh earlier in the year, he can have a very effective game. Sosa, a product of Rice High School in the city, New York City, converts the three-point play for his first points of the game and cuts North Carolina's lead to nine. And not for long, Deion Thompson quickly at the other end. That's the way Roy Williams wants it. He says basketball is a finesse game. Speed is part of finesse. The faster you are, the more chances you get to score. Well, they want a high-volume possession game because they want to wear you out and foul you out. Sosa walks in. No one picked him up. Five quick points off the bench for Edgar Sosa. Nice move by Quentin Thomas. And throws it away. Trying to hit Deion Thompson. Only the fourth turnover North Carolina in this opening half. Sosa just too easy getting all the way to the rim. Nobody steps in front to stop the ball. That's what Louisville wants to do, Dick. They want to speed the game and make guys make plays on the run. And you don't want to allow anything easy, but you want to get non-handlers handling the ball. Clark Sosa, two reserves on the floor now with Patchett, Williams, and Smith. Smith has it stripped away. Ginyard, Tellington! Oh, my! 6'6", six, six, Terrence Williams climbing the ladder to say no, 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 no. Terrence Williams, a spectacular athlete, and it looked like another easy opportunity off the seventh turnover by Louisville, but that was just erased by Williams. Alex Stevenson and Danny Green return after a brief arrest for North Carolina. And that's Derek Character back for Padgett as Rick Pitino makes a move. And Williams swatting that out of bounds. At least it kept North Carolina from getting another offensive rebound. Hansborough has it picked. Jerry Smith with a steal. He's one of the best in the Big East. Great hands, leads this team in deflections, also leads them in steals. Clock ticks down to five minutes left in this opening half in Charlotte, North Carolina. The top seed, and there's a Earl Clark. He looked away, didn't see the ball into his hands. Hansborough did, and he's fouled. No, no, they're going to call a travel. A travel on Hansborough. No basket. Well, Earl Clark looking for that high low and just took his eye off the ball and you can see didn't really have control of the ball and traveled as a result. Pretty good job by Louisville to get back in their transition defense so that Hansborough wasn't able to get all the way to the rim. Winner advances against Kansas or how about Davidson? And that'll be tomorrow. UCLA, the number one in the West, they have advanced with a convincing win over Xavier earlier tonight. Louisville does such a nice job of cutting off of David Padgett when he gets the ball up high, and he can just look over that defense. There's got to be more pressure on the ball to try to discourage that pass. Preston Knowles with his first basket at the other end for Louisville. They'll cut the Carolina lead to seven. Hansborough needs to touch it in the low post. Lawson to Ellington. Green. Lawson has it deflected. That'll score a point with Patino, but Carolina gets it back, and with two, Lawson well off the mark on the hurry jumper. And Louisville's first shot defense again, pretty good, but now limiting North Carolina just one opportunity. Terrence Williams has to go off his knee out of bounds. He had the opening, 
but couldn't take it all the way to the glass, and we have a timeout. Under four to go. North Carolina leads by seven. North Carolina with the lead, 31-24, less than four to go in the opening half. Rebounding key, and Carolina leads by a plus eight, plus three on the offensive end. Eight offensive rebounds for North Carolina by five different Tar Heels. That's led to 12 second-chance points, and when the initial first-shot defense forces a miss, and you get the offensive rebound for an easy opportunity, that's 50% on that possession. Both teams shooting well, 54% for North Carolina, 53% for Louisville, but Louisville guilty of nine turnovers. And that statistic combined with the offensive rebounding prowess of the Tar Heels factors into their seven-point advantage. North Carolina going to try to look to get the ball into the middle of the zone or screen the zone. Down the perimeter of the zone, down to 10, and Patchett out leaps Hansbro for the pass. Ahead to Clark, and he scores. That was a set play by North Carolina with Wayne Ellington setting a back screen on the opposite side, and just well read by Louisville. And Patchett with a foul as Green used his body well on the drive. First foul on Padgett. After the back pick, Padgett reads it beautifully. Great vision of the play. And a nice finish by Earl Clark. But North Carolina, even after a make, pushes it up the floor so quickly. And not a very good foul by David Padgett on the end. Sixth team foul against Louisville. So the Tar Heels will be at the line from now on. Five team fouls on North Carolina. You just never get a break against North Carolina, even after you score, and you're used to, frankly, jogging back at times. You can't do that. It's got to be a full-out sprint. Green hits both free throws, has seven points in the game. And now the pressure in the backcourt by North Carolina. And knocked away from Patchett as Green made the defensive play. And stripped by Louisville. And Knowles pulls up. Rattles it home. The freshman, Preston Knowles, giving Patino some solid minutes. But there's the long pass, and Ginyard gets the easy two quickly at the other end. Beautiful job of passing ahead. And once again, North Carolina with an answer. They make a mistake and immediately re erase that mistake. And a nice job by Ginyard going right into the body of David Patchett. Two and a half minutes left. Patchett. Lost control of the ball as he went up with the left hand over Hansborough. Long pass to Green. And he is fouled. Got hit in the face as he went up for that layup. Every Tar Heel sprints to run, run the lane. You can see North Carolina getting back, but Hansborough immediately inbounds it, and they are looking long, and the heels have Louisville back on their heels and get an easy score to answer the score by Louisville. Patchett with his second foul. Green looks for his eighth point. Every team tries to stop it. They know the Carolina's going to do that off any uh, made basket or rebound. They're going to set a couple of guys free to the other end. You know what, Dick? It's like the Green Bay Packers' old power sweep or student body ride for USC football. You know it's coming. The question is, can you stop it? And so few have been able to stop Roy Williams' transition game, whether he was at Kansas or now at North Carolina. Green perfect from the line, four for four, nine points in the game. Back to a nine-point advantage for the top seed Tar Heels. Character hopped by Hansbro. Character had so much pressure on him, he couldn't see anybody open. Hansbro got away with a foul there. In the character. Over Hansbro, and there's the foul. Coming up, folks, AT&T at the half. Greg Gumbel and the gang will recap how UCLA made it again to the Final Four three years in a row now for the Bruins. They'll talk about Texas head coach uh, Rick Barnes. In fact, I think Rick's going to be visiting with us. And DJ Augustine and an AT&T Naismith watch update all coming up on AT&T at the half. The Derek Character, 6'9 sophomore from Fanwood, New Jersey. Free throw shooting is just average on the year, 64%. And just an absolute load inside. Danny Green, apparently a little blood around that left eye. You can't see it from that angle. And they're going to ask him to uh, 
get some medical attention. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that was when he went up for that layout and was fouled by Padgett. Here it is. Man, he did get raked. Oh, and then a second to wave of the Cardinal defense caught him. Andy Green is such a weapon to bring in off the bench. Talked to him yesterday about adjusting to being a sixth man this season. And do you like it or did you just adjust to it? And he said, well, I've adjusted to it. He'd rather start, but has really embraced the role of a sixth man. That he's learned to study the opposition, the man that he may be defending when he does come in, see the possible holes, for example, in the zone defense used by Louisville where he could go get his shot. And Roy Williams says that he wants his sixth man. You don't want to have a drop off when you bring him in. But with Danny Green, you get a lift. He elevates your play. Character misses both free throws. Back to the 2-3 zone. Ellington from long range. Oh, he's a beautiful stroke. And credit to Alex Stevenson for setting the nice screen after the handoff exchange. A minute and a half to go, and North Carolina builds a 12-point lead thanks to Ellington's tray. Louisville shooting over 50% and down by double digits. Ginyard with a steal, takes it to the other end, hands throw. No basket. The foul was called, I believe, before Ginyard shot. He'll go to the line regardless. If you are not strong with the ball, North Carolina is coming after it, and they are running on every mistake. Ginyard, the great defender, all defensive team in the Atlantic Coast Conference, taking it all the way and drawing the foul. And if he missed that and was not fouled, Tyler Hansbrough ran the court just as quickly. Ginyard, the junior from Alexandria, Virginia, father of United States Marine for 23 years. As Sosa goes to the bench, uh, wincing, reaching at that left knee. He misses both. Clark with a rebound. 122 left in the half. Down by 12. Oh, tough move by character. He's almost behind the backboard when he reached back into play to bank it home. Well, how about that hesitation move and just sprinting past the defense? Ellington misses that three-point try. Chance to get in single digits, uh, the deficit, Louisville, and Clark will do just that on the drive. Such a talented performer. Eight points for Earl Clark, E5, and right back comes North Carolina. You can't take a breath or immediately at the basket at the other end. And how deflating is that, Dick Enberg, to work so hard to get a score in North Carolina? Takes it right at you after. 32 seconds left on the half. 10-point lead. Carolina can go for the last shot. Won't have to hurry, will they? Easy goal for Alex Stevenson, the sophomore from Los Angeles. And now it's Louisville who will take the final shot. 12 seconds left in this first half. This has been vintage Carolina. McGee for three. Well short. At the end of the half. Oh, they love the Tar Heels in Charlotte. And what a first half. As Rick Patino sees Roy Williams' team build a 12-point halftime lead. We'll send you the Gray Gumbel and Company, AT&T at the half, after these messages and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Lexus. Capital One. New Balance. And by Miller Lite. I'm Greg Gumbel in New York. Coming up on AT&T at the half, we'll hear from the victorious UCLA Bruins and talk with head coach Rick Barnes and DJ Augustine of the Texas Longhorns. After this. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. Your world delivered. Hi, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to AT&T at the half. After 20 minutes of play in Charlotte, 
North Carolina owns the game so far, leading Louisville 44-32. I'm joined by Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis. Let's talk about this first half, particularly, Clark, how Carolina was so impressive inside. They did a nice job. They really pushed the ball up the floor, whether the, opponent, the opposing team scores or not. They get action in the paint. Here's a half-court set inside the Hansborough for the jump hook. Loves that shot over his left shoulder. Nice pass from Lawson inside to Thompson. And there's Hansborough again, muscling his way to the bucket. Look at the big fella run the floor and then maneuver around David Padgett. Excellent work getting the ball up the court quickly and then getting high quality shots inside. Seth, anybody on Louisville doing anything right? Well, Terrence Williams looked good the uh, first few minutes of the game anyway. He came out and made some shots. We knew coming in that Louisville would need to shoot well from outside. He opened up with a three-pointer. It looked pretty good and uh, hit a nice 17-footer there, but those were his only two field goals. He's got five points. He leads them in assists. He got back nicely on the fast break there, but look what they're doing inside or not doing inside. This is part of the problem. Not only are they not throwing it down to the block, David Padgett doesn't have a point or a rebound. As a team, Louisville only has five free throws, so the guards are not driving to the rim. They're not throwing it inside. That is priority A for the second half, or they're going to get really blown out. All right, once again, at halftime, North Carolina in the lead by a score of 44 to 32. Now, earlier tonight here on CBS, UCLA just trampled Xavier. Look at Kevin Love. The fake, the drive to the hoop, the finger roll. Bruins were rolling. Love had 19 points, 10 rebounds, and then Darren Collison got into the act. Our Vern Lundquist was impressed. Love tips it, has it, gets it outside. Collison, thank you! Oh, yeah, Darren Collison can shoot. He can also dribble. He will pull up for three. He had 19 points on the night. The Bruins were rolling. Russell Westbrook will get the assist from Collison here and hit the three. And then watch the ball movement by UCLA here. They just trampled Xavier. 76-57 the final. The Bruins on their way to San Antonio. Coach Ben Howland. Ben Howland, your team struggled a little bit end of the season in the tournament. Boy, there was no struggle to it. No, we played very well. We played good defense. I think it's 14 wins in a row, though, Vern. So struggling is, I guess, a matter of perspective. As long as these guys get the W, that's all that matters. And they've done a terrific job the entire year. And we're excited and honored to represent the West as we go to San Antonio. And really more at ease right now because uh, I really feel like we went about as far as we can and lost to a great team. So there's your final score, and the other number ones are going to have to go a long ways to be as impressive as UCLA was tonight. Well, I think this was probably the best 40-minute game for UCLA at both ends of the floor. The defense was stifling. The offensive execution was superb, and they got contributions from everybody. Had four guys in double digits. Everything flows through Kevin Love. He's a great passer. He's a great rebounder. He gets opposing big men into foul trouble. He'll be the one guy in San Antonio that nobody can match up with. All right, so UCLA has punched a ticket to San Antonio tomorrow on CBS. The road to the final. Final four powered by the Pontiac G8 comes your way at 2 Eastern time, leading up to number two Texas against top seed Memphis. Earlier, had a chance to talk with Rick Barnes, the head coach of the Longhorns and guard DJ Augustine. And we asked Coach Barnes if he used reaching the Final Four as a goal to challenge his players. Not really. We, we've talked all year about what's right in front of us, you know, the next game and, and uh, our effort, our mental and physical effort, is, which obviously translate back to concentration. and. That's what we've talked about, and uh, we've always said that uh, if we can, at the end of the game, and we look at ourselves and evaluate it, if we can talk about our effort being the main thing, that we just think that over time we'll win our share of games. Coach, let's talk about facing Memphis and what's going to need to happen from your perspective for your team to advance and beat a terrific team. Well, you know, John Calipari has done a great job uh, with this system, and, and uh I tell you, when you look at it, uh, the concepts that they apply and the, and the things that they do, I think they're an extremely well-coached team offensively. I don't think they probably get enough credit for how well they defend and how they turn people over. And I don't know if anything needs to be said other than the fact that they've got one loss and nine losses over the last three years. I think that speaks volumes for their program and their consistency. But from our standpoint, we're going to have to have a great effort. Uh, defensively, uh, that's where it starts uh, for us, and we've got to do a great job there. We're going to have to rebound the basketball better than we did last night. And then on the offensive end, you must take care of the basketball because they're great at taking those turnovers and, and converting them into plays on the other end. DJ, you've had a terrific season thus far. Talk about the difference between this season and last year in terms of how you approach it as a point guard. This season, I just try to control the game. 
My teammates, they've, they've done a great job of stepping up and playing bigger roles. Everybody has, and uh, it's our defense, you know. I, I give all the credit to our defense. It's been tremendous down the stretch, and uh, we just got to play hard every game. Hey, Rick, a couple of the announcers batted around, a couple of the coaches have had fun with it. Is there such a thing as a home court advantage for you guys? Well, if, uh, if it helps us, I hope so. Memphis can handle anything that's been thrown at them. It will get uh, settled between the lines. I, I mean, if the crowd is a factor, uh, uh, I would be, I mean, we, we're going to have more people here. There's no doubt about it, just as they had more people up in Little Rock. Rick, that guy there on your left, DJ Augustine, certainly gives you a level of comfort every time you take the floor. But your team has risen to a really high level, and Damian James has been absolutely terrific. Talk about his play this season. Damian, uh, uh, what I love about him, we, we leave the film room this morning from watching our game last night, and I looked at him, I said, Damian, what do you think? And he said, Coach, I've got a long way to go. When you've got a guy that's got that kind of attitude, that's willing to be coached and willing to be uh, work on what he needs to work on as a coach, you can't ask for anything more than that. The winner of Memphis, Texas, will meet UCLA in the first game uh, or in one of the semifinal games in San Antonio. Does Texas have a shot against the number one seed, Memphis? They got a real shot, and I think they will be competitive. I like Memphis to win, but the two things for Texas, make outside shots, take care of the basketball. And that guy right there, DJ Augustine, he's been the best point guard in the country all season long. He will have to play his best game for them to win. All right, now time for another edition of our Naismith Watch, presented by AT&T. Clark has thoughts on one of this year's four finalists, Michael Beasley. The nation's top rebounder at over 12 a game also led the country in double-doubles with 28, Michael Beasley. Look at those numbers. Led his team to its first tournament win, Greg, since 1988. Had a terrific freshman season for the Wildcats. All right, and now you can be a part of college basketball history. Text the word VOTE to 87654 to vote for the winner of the 2008 Naismith Trophy. The fans' vote counts for 25% of the total. 44-32 Carolina leading Louisville at halftime. What's Rick Pitino telling his guys? Squeeze that orange. Got to take care of the ball. 11 turnovers too many. Carolina takes advantage of all of your mistakes. Have to take better care of the basketball. I think the hard thing for Louisville is they like to get up and down just like North Carolina does, but it's really playing to North Carolina's advantage. I think Rick Pitino might want to consider calling off that full court press, a little bit of half court token pressure, and then be sure after you make a basket, no celebrating, get back on defense because Carolina is killing them in transition off of made baskets okay. and then punch it inside the patch. I was going to ask you, can Carolina keep up the pace that it set in the first half? Without question, they would love to score another three digit game get over 100 points. And if the pace is fast and they take care of the ball, they've got so many guys that can score it, they will put three digits on the board if Louisville doesn't do a good job of scoring and taking care of the ball. Louisville's got to slow it up and grind it out, try to make it a bit of a slugfest. Again, that's not necessarily their strengths, but I think it's their best chance to win. It is left to me to point out that Mr. Kellogg is the one who predicted that all four number ones will head to San Antonio. We shall see. Thanks for watching AT&T at the half. We'll send you back down to Dick and Jay in Charlotte for the second half of Louisville and Carolina right after this. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. Your world delivered. Getting ready for the second half in Charlotte with North Carolina enjoying its largest lead, 12, over Louisville. And we'll return to Charlotte after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports, two teams looking to San Antonio. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Courtyard by Marriott, Direct TV, Taco Bell, and by Mercedes-Benz. And back in Charlotte, we're ready for the second half. The Blue Bloods from North Carolina, the Thoroughbreds, out on the run, and they have the lead. And we look at the in-game box score powered by CBS College Sports Network, the 24-hour college sports channel from CBS Sports. 
Uh, fast break points, transition points, rebounding North Carolina. Well, North Carolina is winning the battle of easy baskets. Everybody in a full out sprint when North Carolina gains control of the basketball, even after a made field goal. And you can see this after a dead ball. Ty Lawson gets it in. And look at Earl Clark. He allows Marcus Guignard to get behind him. David Padgett hugging up on his man in full court man to man pressure. And that is just a throw over the top for an easy basket. And it's been nothing but easy baskets off the offense the glass in transition North Carolina everybody has sprinted back and the heels have kept the Cardinals on their heels in transition and if you're a North Carolina fan the You'd be pleased to know that with uh, the Tar Heels ahead at halftime, their record has been perfect on the year. 29-0 went ahead at the half. Well, three years ago, Sean May and that great Carolina team went all the way to the championship. And uh, many fans are comparing the big three of that year with the three top players for North Carolina this year. The Louisville Cardinals, they played well, they shot well, 52%, 11 turnovers costly, and the fact that uh, North Carolina seemed to run at will just when Louisville would make a basket, pull a little closer than a quick score the other end for North Carolina was so demoralizing. Well, when they've gotten into their half-court defense, their initial shot defense has been good. They've allowed too many opportunities. They need to start getting to the rim. Too many jump shots, and that's a good start to get into the lane off the curl by Williams. Terrence Williams now with seven. Ellington quickly to the basket. Thompson, 10-footer. Terrence Williams to the other end. Turns down the three from the corner, not close, was Palacios. Too many jump shots for Louisville. They've got to get something inside, something going to the basket. If they want to get into a jump shooting contest with North Carolina, the heels are going to be laying it in most of the game while they're taking jumpers. They're two for nine, Louisville, on three-point attempts. This is Ginyard with Lawson, Thompson, Ellington, and Hansborough on the court for North Carolina. Hansborough. Oh, what a tough shot. Just an incredible ability to get bumped and finish the play. And any time Tyler Hansbrough puts the ball on the floor, he is going to spin back. You've got to be aware of that. Nice move by Williams to counter for Louisville. <laughs> Aaron Baines of Washington State has described Hansbrough as a flailing crocodile. <laughs> In many ways, you see he's a whirling dervish. There's the crock. He got his big jaws on another two. 12 points for Hansbrough to lead all scores. Patchett looking for his first points is fouled before the shot. Tyler Hansbrough spinning back. You can see the contact, and he creates a lot of that contact, but has an extraordinary ability to finish after he gets bumped. And then again, using that spin move to get around the defense. Anytime he puts it on the deck, you can bet that he is going to spin back away from the defense. He's got 12 points now, so he's been in double figures every game this year. This is the 38th game of the season for North Carolina. Deion Thompson picked up that last foul as third, and another whistle against the Tar Heels. And there's another opportunity for a handoff or exchange with David Padgett and then curling off of it to attack in the lane. Louisville's got to do more of that to put some pressure on this North Carolina defense. Ginyard's second foul. Roy Williams makes a move, brings in Alex Stevenson. And what a for Thompson. What a first half for Marcus Ginyard. He had six points, five rebounds, and two steals. Went three of three from the field. Just did a great job defensively as well. Cardinals with the ball, down by a dozen. Clark was the scoring star for Louisville that first half. It was a perfect four for four. Tatchett barrels his way inside and finally has a basket. That's the way Louisville needs to play. Use Padgett as a passer, bring him off, hand the ball off, and then use that handoff to get an angle in the post. Now a 2-3 zone for Louisville. Patchett, who was recruited to Kansas by Roy Williams, arrived just as Williams left to come to North Carolina. Patchett with a rebound, clearing pass to Smith. Lawson from behind, and he can't deny. So a little taste of their own medicine for North Carolina. And uh, 
We've got a whistle at the other end and a hold. That foul on Louisville. It'll go against Jerry Smith as first. When Padgett gets the ball into the high post, you can see the dribble exchange. He uses that to get an angle in the post, and he can use either hand, spinning back to go over that left shoulder. He is right-hand dominant, but also can use his left down low as well. Lawson easily beats the pressure in the backboard. Sets up Stevenson. Most North Carolina that can't afford to settle for jump shots. They've got to get the ball into the middle and look to get it inside as well. And they do get it inside and score. Alex Stevenson, the sophomore from Los Angeles, has four. Williams at the other end. Not there. Clark chases it down. E5. Louisville fortunate. Not a good shot by Williams. That shot is going to be there. Clark on the give and go. Misses badly, but was fouled. Appeared to be Stevenson. They say it's impossible for an underdog to go the distance. Well, then again, they said it's impossible to get real Coke taste and zero calories. Log on to MyCokeRewards.com. Get lots of great NCAA gear. If Louisville executes their half-court offense, the Cardinals can get back into this game. Now the lead under 10. And uh, down to nine. As Stevenson, who picked up that last foul as first, is out. Danny Green returns for North Carolina. Earl Clark with a chance to hit double figures, but along with six rebounds. He's had a terrific tournament. Uh, last seven games, averaging 14 points, eight and a half rebounds off the bench. 63% from the field. Just a, a very talented player. Got off to a great start this season with a number of double doubles. And Big East play really took it out of him at the start, but he's really finishing strong. Green with an air ball. Hansborough, as he came down with a rebound, stepped on the baseline. It's almost like North Carolina can't stand prosperity. They come down and they take a quick jump shot. They had had so much success in pushing the ball up court when it wasn't there. Run good offense. Make Louisville guard you. Terrence Farley with a brief stint back on the bench for Louisville. Preston Knowles, the freshman, back on the floor for Rick Patino. That's Knowles. Clark to Padgett. Padgett tied up. Well, Hansborough trying to front David Padgett. They threw it over the top, and a really nice job by Ty Lawson to come over from the weak side. Knock that ball away. That's what essentially created that turnover. You can see Hansborough really fighting to get around in front, and that pass has got to go over the top. That gives help side defense a chance to recover. Back comes Jerry Smith, and Terrence Williams with a breather. On the hell ball, it's Carolina. This is what Louisville wants, getting into, into the hands of non-handlers. You want to keep it out of this man's hands. Lawson can't hit the look at Hansville. How'd he get in there for the rebound? Gets it back again. Bats it out. Saves it or no. Went out of bounds. Fans wanted a foul. Hansbro may not have gotten the call, but you never see him get out work. If that ball is long or loose, Tyler Hansbro thinks it belongs to him. And as you pointed out, he creates a lot of that contact himself. He makes it really tough on officials. Knowles inside. The score, and he's fouled. Louisville was successful in the first half on occasion, getting the ball to patch it up top and cutting off of him. Then he turns and throws it over the top. The fans in red cheer. Louisville within seven. Charlotte with our tournament summary. Ben Howland's Bruins uh, hit the trifecta. Three straight Final Four appearances for the Pac-10 champions. All four number one seeds have advanced to the Elite Eight. UCLA is in at San Antonio. And here, number one, North Carolina in the lead. And uh, our sagacious friend Clark Kellogg uh, predicted all four number ones would make it to the Final Four. Tough to bet against that. Xavier had a terrific run. Knowles unable to complete the three-point play. And so it's North Carolina with the ball, leading Louisville. And uh, foul as Ellington makes his drive. Ellington was right in the middle of four red shirts. They just slapped down to foul. And North Carolina needs to answer this 
run by Louisville. Louisville's gone five of seven from the field in the second half, has only turned it over one time. If you remember last year, Dick, we got Georgetown down by 11, missed 22 of 23 shots for Georgetown to take them to overtime and ultimately win. Green with the drive, and it's out of bounds to North Carolina. In fact, uh, Wayne Ellington has been haunted by a miss in regulation. He had a chance to win it for North Carolina in this round. The lead eight against Georgetown could not hit that shot and uh, to have to swallow a defeat and be denied the final four. He wants to make amends and certainly has played some great ball. Lawson, what a solid move. Ty Lawson takes it in strongly. Now how do you stay in front of him? Roy Williams has said that Ty Lawson is the fastest point guard he has ever coached, and he's coached Jock Vaughn at Kansas and Raymond Felton at North Carolina. That is speed. Carolina faithful on their feet. Knowles from outside tries the three. Catch it with a tough rebound. Just threw everybody out of the way. Smith hits the three. Thanks to Padgett's hustle and fight to get that rebound and a second chance. And the vision to find an open shooter after the offensive rebound. The best time to take a three-point shot. Back to the 2-3 zone after the made field goal. That middle wide open. That'll be on Knowles. Reach in, trying to stop Lawson. His second foul. Well, this is as close as Louisville's been since the middle of the first half. What was good for North Carolina in the first half has been good for Louisville in the second. Going after the offensive glass, kicking it out to an excellent three-point shooter in Jerry Smith. Both Knowles and McGee rested by Coach Rick Casino. Edgar Sosa back into the game for Louisville along with uh, Earl Clark. Louisville's gotten a great contribution from its bench in this game. Ellington pulls up for three. Not there. Clark and Williams battle, and it's Williams who gives Louisville another chance. Down by only a half dozen. Sosa walking in for an easy layup. And oh my, a four-point game. Tar Heels led by a dozen at the half. Green takes it all away against Padgett. Oh, hand throw. Whenever North Carolina needs it, it's Hansbro that comes through. What a play. 14 points and 10 rebounds. A double-double already for Hansbro. High pass is batted toward the sidelines by North Carolina. Louisville's ball. Danny Green attacking in transition, going over Padgett, and nobody boxes out Tyler Hansbro. They've got, they've got to know he's coming. The young man never, ever takes a play off. Another double-double for Tyler Hansbro. One of the most competitive players in any sport we've seen for a while. He just can't get enough. He wants to be better with every move, every game, every practice. Didn't take Monday off. The whole team did last Monday. He was in the gym for two and a half hours. Smith from long range. Not there, but Clark has another rebound, and that's a reach in on Danny Green. Second foul on Green. Tyler Hansbro is all effort, but when that shot went up, every Louisville player became a ball watcher, and they paid the price for it because Hansbro was coming in like a freight train from the top of the key. Five team fouls on North Carolina here in the second half. Three on Louisville. And a whistle and a hold, and they're pointing at Wayne Ellington. His first. That has been very good for Louisville. Getting it to Padgett, letting him turn and cut off him. And they've given up a couple of layups as a result. And just the hold trying to keep Jerry Smith from getting to the rim. Next Tar Heel foul sends the Cardinals to the line. 13 minutes and change remaining here in the second half in Charlotte. A berth in the final four in San Antonio next weekend on the line. Louisville gets the ball from side to side. Much more effective. Williams with a drive. Clark with a fake. Nice ball movement. Sosa for a three. That would have been big. Smith with a loose ball. Takes it in against Hansbro. Misses an easy attempt. And Padgett is fouled. Louisville's just quicker to the ball. Ginyard over the top with a foul. 
in the second half, the Cardinals have done a much better job of making North Carolina guard them in the half court, taking away transition. It was Green on the other side that uh, took the foul, his third. Thompson with three and Ginyard with three for Carolina. At the line is the big senior, David Patrick. From Reno, 6'11", after a year playing for Bill Self, elected to leave Kansas. And Roy Williams, as we said, was the man who recruited him, sat out a year, and then uh, migrated to Louisville to play for Rick Pitino. When we saw him play in high school, David Padgett, the one thing he could do better than anyone else in his class was run the floor, and injuries have taken that away from him. Near steal by Louisville. Clayton Thomas. Block. Hands were almost another score and a foul. That's going to be a travel before the foul. And look at Terrence Williams. These Cardinals are fired up. And the fans uh, are in disbelief. And joining them, Roy Williams. Well, they had better believe it and start guarding in the half court because Louisville is a confident team and they are playing through David Padgett and he's been dominating this game without scoring. Great pass by Padgett. Jerry Smith with the basket. It's a two-point game. Twelve minutes to go and Hansbrough just does beat the ten-second count. Thompson. Oh, that's a tough little five-footer. And North Carolina builds its lead to four. And Louisville inbounding the ball quickly to get it up for it. Padgett has to continue to touch the ball. Smith tries another trade. Down the bottom. 56-55. 17 for Jerry Smith to lead all scores. Louisville is moving the ball and moving themselves, and as a result, they've become much harder to guard in the second half. That 12-point halftime lead for North Carolina has eroded down to one. A 12-4 run by the men in red from Louisville. Hansborough and a foul. When in trouble, find number 50 and find the middle of the lane. Clinton Thomas on the penetration to break down the defense. And a little dump down to Hansbrough. And nobody finishes better when he gets it right next to the basket. The answer by Tyler Hansbrough. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevy. Coca-Cola. Bud Light. And by AIG. Fifty-eight, fifty-five. Well, they're the sweethearts, the darlings of the tournament, the Davidson Wildcats. And they'll be on CBS tomorrow as we look to finish the puzzle for the Final Four. Live at 2.20, Texas and Memphis in the south. Then at 5.50 Eastern, surprising Davidson. Number one, Kansas in Detroit. It's a super doubleheader tomorrow to wrap up the regional play and set up the Final Four for San Antonio next weekend. Hans Bro for the three-point play. That's his first free throw, and that in itself is news. He averages 10 free throws a game. But the three-point play builds Carolina's lead back to four. North Carolina going with its point zone in the half court. Louisville shooting 60% the second half. Jay Billis, nine for 15. And they've kept North Carolina out of transition. Only one transition basket in the second half for North Carolina. Ten on the shot clock. Smith has had the hot hand and drills another three. 59-58. Make that uh, Andre McGee. Andre McGee with that three. In the hands, bro, out to Green. The answer with three. Rattles out. And Louisville with a chance for the lead. They've not been in front since the opening two minutes of the game. Clark takes it in and is fouled. Deion Thompson, and that'll be his fourth. Well, getting a scholarship with zero skills, uh-huh. Well, about as unbelievable, getting real Coke taste and zero calories. 
You can win a $25,000 scholarship, folks, from Coke Zero at MyCokeRewards.com. Earl Clark, one to tie, and misses that one. He's a 66% free throw shooter on the season as Ty Lawson and Marcus Ginyard return for Carolina. And the sky is the limit for the potential of this young player, Earl Clark. He just keeps getting better and better and more and more confident. Ties it at 59 with 10-21 remaining in the second half. That's a travel against North Carolina. That small section of Louisville fans, they're starting to believe. Good defense there by the freshman, Preston Knowles. And North Carolina not alert in taking the ball out of bounds under. Knowles inside to Clark. Green hawking him. There's a travel the other way. No basket. It just wasn't there. Earl Clark's got to be able to kick that back out and then repost. We tick down to the midpoint of this second 20-minute period in Charlotte, North Carolina. Favored North Carolina 59, the third seed Louisville 59. Hensbrough with a score. And Lawson just has great eyes. 19 points for Tyler Hansbrough, the three-time Carolina All-America. Pandemonium here in Charlotte. The sea of Carolina blue. The sixth time they've played in this arena. They're 5-0 this year. Into Patchett. Working on Hansborough. And a foul on Hansborough. Or did he step out of bounds? Yeah, he, he traveled is the call. Rick Patino not uh, liking that whistle. 9-30. Left in the second half, North Carolina by a basket. A game of high quality, as one might have expected. Both teams shooting well above 50%. Jerry Smith, the sophomore for Louisville, the guard with 17 to lead the Cardinals, and Tyler Hansbro, who else, for North Carolina with a double-double. Smith having a big game here in the clutch. Louisville outscoring Carolina's bench 25 to 13. And another plus for Louisville at the moment. Carolina's committed eight fouls, so Louisville will be at the line one and one. Louisville four foul fouls in this second half. And Wayne Ellington and Danny Green have yet to score in the second half. They had 20 points combined in the first half. Sticking with that 2-3 zone. Very active, a lot of man-to-man -man principles in this zone. North Carolina's got to be able to penetrate it, whether by it's the pass or the dribble. Five seconds. And that's good defense, and Patchett rips it away from Green. Here come the birds from Louisville. Eight forty-five remaining. The winner to San Antonio against either Kansas or Davidson. They play tomorrow here on CBS. Clark inside, and they're going to call a travel. That's twice he has had baskets negated on a travel. And Danny Green doing a nice job of staying between Clark and the basket, but Clark just trying to pull his way to the basket. More of a perimeter player than a post-up player. 15 Louisville turnover. Green hustles into the offensive end. Hansbrough inside the line. Gets it. When you leave him alone, he's deadly from that 15, 17-foot jumper. 21 for Hansbrough to lead all scores. No hesitation and no fear. Hansbrough gets away with an over the back there. But these North Carolina fans, many of them, I don't think they've ever taken a seat in this game except in a timeout. Most of the crowd on its feet here in this possession. 10 on the shot clock. Batted away by Hansborough. With five. Stripped away and a foul. I think they got Ty Lawson. No, Danny Green, and that'll be four on Green. 7.51 to go.
7.51 to go here in Charlotte in North Carolina with a four-point lead led by Tyler Hansbrough. He's one assist away from a triple-double. Well, Tyler Hansbrough has stepped forward when North Carolina's offense has sputtered in the second half, whether it's knocking down a perimeter jumper off ball reversal, getting a big offensive rebound. He's got 21 points. 10 rebounds, six of them on the offensive end, and two steals in his 30 minutes of play. And nine assists, so one more assist, and uh, he'll make that loss, and I'm sorry, looking at the wrong line with the nine assists. And a missed free throw, and those are too precious. That was the front end for Jerry Smith. And Louisville in a very good position with fouls. If they are strong with the ball, every foul, the remainder of the way, they are shooting free throws. Double bonus. Six for 13, however, are the Cardinals from the line in the game. And there's a hold away from the ball. And Edgar Sosa at the top of that 2-3 zone. Second foul on Sosa. And for Louisville, five team fouls. Louisville does something interesting. They go man-to-man -man on out-of-bounds underneath. A lot of teams play man, and then they'll go 2-3 zone on out-of-bounds underneath. They do it opposite. Look at Hansbrough work to get position on Patchett. And Sosa gets in from the backside. Foul on Sosa, number three. Well, you really have to sit on that spin move. Any time that Tyler Hansbrough takes the ball into the middle off the bounce, he's going to spin back. And Padgett does a nice job of pushing him out on the floor, but just unable to move his feet to stay with him, but was sitting right on it. And Sosa's got to show more discipline there. He can't foul him in that situation. That free throw gives Hansbro 2,145 points in his three years. This is the second. He's tied with Sam Perkins, number two all-time in Carolina scoring history behind Phil Ford. He's done it in three years. Ford and Perkins played four. Back door. Terrence Williams over Hansborough and a foul. Unbelievable strength by Terrence Williams. The great backdoor cuts of delivery, and how about that finish? Terrence Williams, one of the many outstanding players produced in the city of Seattle, Washington. Went to Rainier Beach. Used to play football and basketball against Nate Robinson up in Seattle. And he hits the three-point play and 12 points for Terrence Williams, just above his average. And Louisville's back within two. And Louisville is an outstanding cutting team. And they find great openings. They've done a great job in the second half of cutting. Ellington can't hit, but look at Hansborough. Gets another rebound and is trying to hit it off Smith to save possession as he fell out of bounds. But Smith wisely alert, uh, eluded the dodgeball throw. Hansborough just outworks people. Never takes a playoff. Not a single play in his career if I've seen him take off. 6.50 to go. Louisville, a basket away from the tie. A three-point away from the lead. The lob to Clark, and it was right there. He couldn't put it down. Ginyard with a rebound. Lawson flying to Hansborough, and a foul on Patrick. Just one little mistake by Louisville, not finishing a play on another terrific pass by David Padgett. Whenever he gets the ball, he has made very good decisions. And North Carolina getting an opportunity to push it up the court. You saw Padgett come over to Clark. Now, don't get your head down because you missed that shot. And he's, uh, he's the emotional leader of this team, the senior Padgett. He picked up his third foul. Hansbrough and adds to his uh, point count. Only so four to score more in North Carolina history. He's got 23 points and a dozen rebounds. Hansbrough. Four-point lead. Tar Heels. And that's a reach around on Hansbrough. That'll be his third. And Hansbrough does get a lot of steals, but that's an unnecessary reach around the body of David Padgett, especially since he got on the high side. And... Now they're going to call that almost every time when a big guy reaches across the body of another big guy. So North Carolina has two men in immediate foul trouble with four and two others, including Hansborough, with three. Five points now 
for Padgett. Green and Thompson with four. Ginyard and Hansborough with three. There's David Padgett. Donald's All-America in Reno, California, Nevada. Hits them both. It's a two-point game. 66-64. Six minutes plus remaining. And a tough basket by Dion Thompson. Louisville has done a very nice job of keeping the ball out of the hands of Ty Lawson. On that possession, it was Ginyard that took it all the way and a nice catch and finish by Thompson who has made much tougher and much quicker moves ever since he got into the postseason. The sophomore from Torrance, California, quiet 10 points. Kind of goes unnoticed, but he in double figures so often. And having that big body on the floor really helps and Earl Clark needs to take him out on the perimeter a bit. Patchett, the point center, looks for someone open, no one underneath. So up around the perimeter goes, and then back into Patchett. Lost control of the ball, but got it back to Clark. He's double teamed. And the whistle. Timeout. Was that called by Rick Patino at the Louisville bench? No clear signal. Yes, timeout. Louisville. Five and a half to go. Two seconds on the shot clock when we come back. Dickenberg J. Bellis back in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Queen City of the South has had a regal performance from these two teams. North Carolina leading by four as the Louisville Cardinals rallied from 12 points down at the half. Had the game tied at 59. And uh, they rechecked the clock after the timeout call by Louisville and added a second on the shot clock as the Cardinals will have to uh, get it inbounds and fire quickly. Uh, plenty of time for a catch and dribble, catch and shoot opportunity, and Rick Pitino very good at out of bounds underneath to draw something up, and this will be out of bounds on the side, right in front of the Louisville bench. Pitino has told us he doesn't like to yell at practice, so he uses a microphone. One of the few coaches in the country conducts practices with a microphone plugged into the PA system at Louisville. You don't believe that he doesn't like the yell business, do you? <laughs> well, that's what he said. From the corner and not there as Jerry Smith tried the three. Four-point lead, Carolina. Ooh, dribbled off his foot to Ty Lawson. that got it back. Deflected out of bounds by Smith with 17 on the shot clock. And Louisville's really done a nice job of forcing North Carolina to execute against a set defense. There has been far less transition in the second half, and it has really affected North Carolina's ability to score efficiently. Lawson from the corner, drills the three. Ty Lawson, that was big. And suddenly the heels have a seven-point advantage. Seven points for their point guard. Nice job reading the defense to flare back into the corner. Smith can't hit the three. Ginyard. Thompson. Earl Clark able to get the rebound and the quick feed ahead to Williams. Deflected by Ellington and taken away by Thompson. Well, two poor possessions by Louisville. First, the quick shot, and then the ill-advised drive and turnover by Williams. 4.20 left in this second half. A coveted spot in the final four to the winner. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Ginyard. Blocked by Clark. And out of bounds to Louisville. What? He is long, isn't he? Such a good shot blocker. Very good timing. He had four blocks against Tennessee in what was a spectacular performance. 17 points, 12 boards, and just waited for Ginyard to leave the floor before he left the floor to block the shot. That's just terrific timing by the sophomore. Clark, who led the team in blocks on the season with 58. He Triggers the pass inbounds as uh, Lawson gets a ball. 
Clinton Thomas in for him. Inside to Clark. Good body control for the sophomore, and it's 71-66. 12 for Clark with nine rebounds. Just cutting off of David Padgett up top and getting that low post position too easy. Down to three and a half minutes to play. And timeout called by Roy Williams. He signals he wants a 30-second timeout. Ty Lawson quiet in the scoring column, but hits a huge three. Back in Charlotte with three and a half minutes to go. North Carolina with a five-point lead. Timeouts, both coaches have some to spend. Team fouls, Louisville's in the double bonus, and Louisville with seven fouls, Carolina one and one. 18 on the shot clock after the timeout called by Roy, Roy Williams. Louisville really needs to pressure North Carolina, especially Clinton Thomas. Make him handle against pressure. Six on the shot clock. Hansbrough has it stolen. That's the quick hands of Andre McGee. Junior from Moreno Valley, California with the ball after the steal. Three minutes to go. Louisville down by five. Oh, a bad pass right through the ankles of McGee. 17 Louisville turnovers. How costly they have been. Just under three to go here in Charlotte. 71-66 North Carolina tomorrow. We start at 220 with a Texas-Memphis battle. Number two against number one. And then uh, remarkable Davidson and Stephen Curry. Can he pull another upset as they go against Kansas? Winners to the final four. Uh, Stephen Curry of Davidson has been amazing in second halves. And in this second half, Wayne Ellington and Danny Green still have yet to score. Lawson easily breaks the press. You just can't trap Ty Lawson. Looking at the 2-3 zone. Carolina can afford to be patient. Clock is their ally with a five-point lead. Hansborough inside the line. That's his spot. He's hit three of those tonight. And Hansborough now with 26 to lead all scores. Padgett making him prove it. And this second half has been all Tyler Hansborough for North Carolina. Clock ticks down to 210 into Earl Clark. Oh, that's a travel. Well, that's the third time he has traveled in the post trying to back his man in. And the youth of Earl Clark showing in the second half. And Tertino, knowing this one is close to getting away from Louisville, wants a timeout. Against the 2-3 zone, this is the spot that's open. Tyler Hansbrough comes in, watch David Padgett. He's going to make him prove it from up top. Nobody gets a hand up until late, and Tyler Hansbrough sticks the jumper. This is a shot that last year he would not have taken with this kind of confidence, but you talked about it, Dick Enberg, on Monday. Instead of taking a day off, Tyler Hansbrough put up 500 shots, and I'll bet he put up a couple hundred from that very spot, and it pays off in the second half. 11 for 16 from the floor for Hansbrough. And meanwhile, Earl Clark with another turnover, his seventh. He has 12 points and nine, reba nine rebounds, but seven turnovers, Clark. Three of those were travels. North Carolina doesn't want to take their foot off the gas, but at the same time, you want to use some clock. If they can get a shot up around five or four, they've got time for an offensive rebound. Lawson skidding at five. Hansbrough with a fake. He'll take the shot at three. And hit again. Tyler Hansbrough showing the nation why he is the favorite to win all the top prizes as this year's most valuable player in college basketball. 28 points. 12 rebounds for Hansbrough. And when they needed a bucket, he was there to answer. Williams is short. Hansbrough, who else to rebound? He is not supposed to be able to make those jump shots. He has just been willing the ball into the basket for North Carolina and willing the Tar Heels to the final four. A minute from San Antonio are the North Carolina Tar Heels. Listen to this crowd.
Dick Enberg, you can diagram plays, you can talk about skills, but Tyler Hansbro has got a heart that no other player in America can match, and his will exceeds his skill, and frankly, his skill is considerable. What an amazing performance in the second half by the National Player of the Year. Ty Lawson at the line to add some frosting to this lead with exactly one minute to go. It was tied at 59 as Louisville with a gallant comeback from 12 points down at halftime. And then they battled back and forth. Two, three, four-point leads. Louisville within four at 68-64. And then Tyler Hansbro wrapped his big mitts around the throat of the Cardinals. With a minute to go, we salute our Chevrolet players of the game, Jerry Smith, the sophomore guard for the Cardinals with 17 points, 7 to 12 shooting, and who else but Tyler Hansbro with 28 points and 13 rebounds to lead the North Carolina Tar Heels. And so many of those points came at exactly the time when it appeared Louisville had momentum. Hansbro just turned it back to the Tar Heel side, especially in the second half where Ellington and Green had been shut down. They couldn't shut down Hansbro. Earl Clark with a miss, but a second chance. Sosa from three, and he hits it. Edgar Sosa with a tray. To make it seven, make it uh, 80 to, well, let's see, 77 to 69. The scoreboard here is the most difficult to read in all of sport. <laughs> and a whistle and a foul. That's all Louisville can do at this point. When we talked to Tyler Hansbro yesterday, along with players and coaches, uh, CBS has this very nice hat that has the San Antonio Final Four logo, and we gave it to Hansbro. He looked at it, saw the logo that said Final Four, and gave it back to us. He said, not yet. I'm not wearing that hat until we secure our spot. And uh, he almost single-handedly in the second half has done just that. Ellington with the free throw. We talk so much about the will and the heart of Tyler Hansbro. You almost do it to the exclusion of the skill level, and he does have an outstanding skill level, but I've just never seen a player compete like Tyler Hansbro competes. I was fortunate enough to play against Michael Jordan in college, and Michael Jordan did not outcompete Tyler Hansbro. No way. The victory all but secure. We're down to the final seconds here in Charlotte. The back door to Williams. He scores, but Hansborough wasn't about to foul there. And a foul in the backcourt. I believe that was on Sosa of Louisville to stop the clock. 28 seconds left. Fourth foul on Sosa. And as long as North Carolina continues to step to the line and knock down their free throws, and this is an excellent free throw shooting team, Louisville does not have enough time to continue to trade three for two. Lawson steps to the line looking for his 10th point. He has nine assists in the game, and he's a perfect from maturity, five for five now. North Carolina really showed great resilience in the regional semi and here in the regional final. And they got slowed down by Washington State. North Carolina showed they could win a game defensively and win a game going against a set half-court defense for 40 minutes. Carolina 16 for 19 free throws. Outstanding teams. They have to hit the charities down the stretch, and they've done that. Inside with a nice move goes Sosa. And then the quick foul by Sosa will be his fifth, and will take him out of the game. You know, back to Hansbro. Here's uh, just a highlight package of the talent of this junior. Well, Tyler Hansbro averages 23 points, just over 10 rebounds per game, almost four offensive rebounds, but he made so many big plays in the second half of this game and big perimeter shots. Not a strength of his, but something that he is no longer reluctant to do. That's pull the trigger on a face-up jumper from 15 to 17 feet. He has really improved that part of his game. Fletch, 20 points in the second half. From Poplar Bluff, Missouri, down at the edge of the Ozarks, and we asked Roy Williams, is that a, you know, it sounds like a beautiful spot of southern Missouri. He said, oh, it's a very pretty place. But he said, I tell you what, when I walked into the gym and I saw that big rascal playing, it really got pretty. And uh, successfully able to recruit him to Chapel Hill. One wonders, will he stay for a senior year? He would set all the Carolina records, wouldn't he? 
Well, if he comes back as a senior, he will be the first player in NCAA history to be four times first team All-America. That is absolutely remarkable. Green with the free throw, his 10th point of the game. And Ty Lawson has been as healthy as we have seen him in this NCAA tournament. But on that last possession, he began limping a little bit, and he is not moving the same way that he did throughout the first 39 minutes of this game. Palacios with the three. Hansbrill hits the deck, fighting for the ball, and then the turnover. Here's where Ty Lawson got nailed on a pick, and not sure if this is exactly where he began limping, but it happened on that last possession, and you could see him limping back to the bench before he is not walking as well as he was earlier in the game. The final roar of this partisan Tar Heel crowd, North Carolina, goes to the Final Four. And the Cardinals of Louisville brought the fight. They had the game tied in the middle of the second half. But it was the superior firepower of North Carolina, led by their three-time All-America, Tyler Hansbrough, to prevail 83-73. They'll meet the winner of Kansas Davidson that game tomorrow on CBS. Final score, 83-73 North Carolina will join Greg Gumbel in New York right after this. Hi, once again, everyone, and welcome to the Road to the Final Four, powered by the Pontiac G8. I'm Greg Gumbel in New York. A reminder, Clark, Seth, and I will be back at 2 Eastern time tomorrow to guide you on the Road to the Final Four, powered by the Pontiac G8. We will set the stage for the South Regional Final between Texas and Memphis. Tip time is 2.20 Eastern. That's followed by Davidson and Kansas in the Midwest Regional Final. The winners advance to the Final Four in San Antonio one week from tonight. Speaking of tonight, here on CBS, for most of you, stay tuned for your late local news. Our final score in Charlotte, North Carolina. The number one seed in the East and the number one overall seed in the tournament. North Carolina moving on to San Antonio. Back out to Dick Enberg and Jay Billis. <laughs> All right, Greg, thank you. Roy Williams, congratulations. Uh, you got that ticket. These kids are ready to go to Texas. They're ready to go to San Antonio. It was a great, great game. Uh, it was a little heart, heart patter there a few times, but the big fella here made a couple of big shots. We finally got some stops down the stretch, and we couldn't feel any better right now. Well, your opponent gave you plenty in that second half, didn't they? Well, they came out. We couldn't get a stop, and we tried to go zone, and we got a stop, and then they get the rebound and still put it back in. But all these guys behind me were great. Well, the uh, chance tomorrow to watch who your opponent may be, Kansas. or da It's interesting. You started the season on this court against a team, Davidson, as I recall. Well, I, I just know that we're going to enjoy the crap out of this one tonight <laughs> and a lot of the day tomorrow, I can tell All you right. that, Dick. Well done. Thank you very Jay? much. Jay? Well, Tyler Hansbro, yesterday we offered you a hat that says Final Four on it. You wouldn't take it. Will you take it now? Yeah, I'll definitely take it now. I mean, yesterday it wasn't, uh, I didn't feel like we accomplished anything, but... You know, definitely now, I feel like I'll take this one. Well, the second half, it was you that took over in the game when Wayne Ellington and Danny Green couldn't find any scoring. It was you that stepped forward. You stepped forward from the perimeter as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, we work on that shot every day in practice. I wasn't scared to take it. My teammates got me the ball, and I just felt confident. Last year, you came so close in the game against Georgetown, the Elite Eight just falling short. What does it feel like now, the chance to go to San Antonio, perhaps win a national championship? You know, it feels great. You know, just get that taste out of our mouth. Uh, you know, we, we've, we've had that feeling with us, I feel like, the whole season. You know, just so close to getting to it last year. You know, it feels great right now. Well, congratulations on a great performance, Dick. Yes, sir. Well, the North Carolina Tar Heels, the number one seed, number one in the nation, they're on their way to San Antonio. We'll be back with Greg right after these words. Welcome back on the road to the Final Four, powered by the Pontiac G8. I'm Greg Gumbel in New York, alongside Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis. And you see them celebrating still out in, uh, uh, in Charlotte, where the North Carolina Tar Heels knocked off Louisville by a score of 83-73. to 73. The turnover did the Cardinals in tonight. Well, I tell you what, they shot it extremely well, played hard on defense, but they did not squeeze it. They had 11 turnovers in the first half, eight in the second half, and a number of the, the eight in the second half, Greg, were really untimely. Here you see Padgett trying to work along the baseline. Not much room steps out of bounds. Earl Clark, terrific sophomore player, just not quite strong enough to hold his position in the low post on a couple of occasions. 
and ended up traveling. Here he is again trying to back down Danny Green and lost his balance, but that young man has a bright future. And North Carolina got big-time shot-making from its All-America, Tyler Hanson. And as they continue to celebrate out there, let's talk about this Carolina team, Seth. On their way to their 17th Final Four, Roy Williams, his sixth Final Four, and a coach wants to have his team peaking this time of year. Is that North and Carolina? And they certainly are, and they have the National Player of the Year in Tyler Hansbro. I mean, those jump shots that he made, he was making shots that he really hadn't made all year. It was pure mental will forcing the ball through the basket. Taiwan Lawson was solid. Danny Green was solid once again. Uh, they shot 53% uh, from the field. And they did not allow Louisville to get going uh, in terms of their drives to the basket. Louisville had to settle for long jump shots and three-point shots. It really worked for North Carolina. Today. All right, earlier today, out in Phoenix, Xavier and UCLA. This is UCLA's Josh Ship to Kevin Love. What a day Kevin Love had. Yeah, he was terrific again. Big-time effort. Here he is keeping alive. A missed free throw. Kicks it out to Darren Collison. Boom! And UCLA was rolling. Look at the ball movement here. Russell Westbrook to Mba Mute. And UCLA played its best game for 40 minutes so far in the tournament All they today. did was shoot 54%. They knocked off Xavier by a score of 76-57. They will await the winner of tomorrow's game against uh, between Memphis and Texas. They continue to celebrate in Charlotte. We'll take a timeout and be right back. Here's the way things shape up tomorrow. We begin at noon Eastern time. You can start your viewing day with the CBS Sports Spectacular Monster Energy AMA Supercross. Then at 1 Eastern time, it's the Jeep King of the Mountain Snowboard Championships. Then Clark, Seth, and I will be back here at 2 for another trip down the road to the Final Four, powered by the Pontiac G8. We will set the stage for the South Regional Final between Texas and Memphis. Tip time, 2.20 Eastern. That's followed by Davidson and Kansas in the Midwest Regional Final. We remind you, for a recap of all the day's madness, check out NCAA March Madness highlights powered by the first ever Pontiac G8. Coming up next on the CBS College Sports Network, the new pulse of college sports. Tonight on CBS, for most of you, stay tuned for your late local news. The original tournament field of 65, now down to six. We'll complete our final four tomorrow. For Clark, Seth, for all of us here at CBS, see you then.